This right here is the beginning of Vermont. We're making progress. We're a little over 500 miles into this journey. Peaceful, scenic, old barns and old trailers on the sides of the road. It's my understanding that a class four road is, is a designation they use in Vermont to indicate that it's no longer maintained. This road could be a, a hundred years old without any maintenance on it. And there we go. We made it through our first class four. It's like running rapids. Here we are again on another class four section. Not so difficult right now, but if it gets more like that last section was, I'm not gonna lie. A 1200 GS might feel like a, a little too big of a bike. There's definitely limitations to what's appropriately fun for a big 1200 cc motorcycle. Your physical fitness plays a huge role in your ability to, to enjoy riding a big bike. We don't have an official difficulty scale in the backcountry discovery routes. Everybody's skill level is different, so what's hard for someone might be easy for someone. Road conditions change because of maintenance, lack of maintenance, weather, all kinds of factors can change the difficulty level of a route. So I would say that that little class four section that we did would be intermediate for sure. It could be expert level to someone that's a little lesser experienced. So we're barely cracking the surface of Vermont and I can already tell that things are getting a little bit more dramatic in terms of the scenery. There's this rocky river flowing down the mountain to the right. And when you catch glimpses of it, now it's on the left over here. It's pretty spectacular. Wow, that's a big gully right on the left here. We don't want to fall in that. There we go. That's just one of those little things that you don't want to get stuck halfway. You won't have anywhere to put your feet. Oh, look at this tree in the middle of the road. Can we go around? There's a big ditch right to my right that I just do not want to go down in. There we go. All right. Well, that little snafu probably cost us 45 minutes of time and effort. It's a fun little adventure, but I'm not sure what purpose it served other than to illustrate the difficulty of putting together routes like this, finding roads that work, that are open, accessible, that just meet all the right criteria that we're looking for. In there are a lot of factors that go into creating a route, more than you could even imagine. This is your quintessential forest road here. The whole floor of the forest is carpeted with ferns and mosses. This is a freshly graded road. There's the road grader. We just stopped at this little market. We're gonna have some lunch, take a quick break. But this place is cool. Like everywhere I look, there's these little white clapboard buildings, old churches, a very manicured yet natural environment. So I like it here. I'm feeling this Vermont vibe. We're going to have a quick break, get something to eat and continue on. There's no advertising on the side of the roads. You don't see billboards here. So the natural environment isn't cluttered by all of this visual pollution. Nice little town, quiet, scenic, cute little houses. Kind of like most of the things I'm seeing here in Vermont. Everybody seems to take care of their property. Fixed up nice, nice yards. It's about five o'clock. I think that's time to call it a day. We're gonna find a place to stay here. Looks like there's some country inns, that kind of thing. Vermont's pretty cool so far. A lot of uh, interesting old buildings, like old farmhouses, federal style farmhouses, real 
vintage period looking and uh, it's just kind of cool. It's been very scenic. The Vermont economy is based on service jobs. No industry per se to speak of. Um, if you want to get a good high paying job, maybe Burlington would be the place. But other than that, it's just a lot of service jobs up here. So far, since we left Hancock, New York, we've done about 630 miles. We're coming up on the halfway point. And this evening, uh, we should be in New Hampshire. This is Londonberry. Butcher, fine dining, farm to table, natural foods, deli, liquor outlet. There's a Napa Auto Parts. So here's something interesting up ahead. They've got these concrete barriers in the road. And if you look right on the other side, there's a big sinkhole right here not something you'd want to run into unexpectedly so good idea to have these barriers up here I don't know what caused that sinkhole you can see over here there's a, a big depression where there's a creek runoff so probably just runoff water underneath the ground here carved it out and that's why it's collapsing nice little canyon with a river down there it's not exactly full of water right now but there's a little bit just exploring some kind of old industrial mill. Here's some railroad tracks and railroad ties. A cool old Woody's Jeep. I didn't see any signs indicating that this was what they call a class four road, but it seems like it very likely could be. Watch this tree here. Okay, some mud up ahead. branch. We'll go right over that one. Some rocks and a creek. Just driving my little tractor through the woods. Okay. Now I can tell you some of these rocks look slippery. They look kind of wet. So, whoa, yes, indeed. That is going to be part of the challenge here, it's slippery rocks. This is tiring. Woo. It's not easy with a big, big ass motorcycle. But seriously, this is slippery, loose, rocky, not easy. It looks like we're coming out up here. And if that is the case, then there you go. You've seen this little class four section in real time all the way through, just to give you an idea of what something like that it might be like and here we are back in suburbia we just went past the big wood pile and I stopped took some pictures of my motorcycle in front of all those big cut pieces of wood so the choice is to either go down this mud or up and over this big log kind of have to have your line right and then swerve to avoid that tree, but you don't want to go over the edge here. The worst thing that could happen is if you didn't have enough speed and you stopped here and fell over to the left. Will I regret this decision to go the low road instead of the high road?
right, so I made it through the mud bog. Bend my mirrors back. At least I didn't break anything. Hand guards did their job protecting my levers. Here we are back in civilization. There's a KTM parked over there. Nice dry stacked stone walls. That's some handiwork. I wish I could stack stones like that. I've been getting a lot of practice lately at my motel in Arizona. I've dry stacked a few walls in the backyard so far. So this is the little town of Rochester. It's just one of the many small towns that you go through. It's a bookstore and a bakery on the right, cafe on the left. There's a hardware store over there on the right, a farm to table restaurant. There's a bicycle shop and an art gallery. I can see it on the GPS. It says Frost Road. Robert Frost was an American poet. He wrote the famous poem about two paths diverging in the woods, and he took the one less traveled that had made all the difference since. We're in central to, I'd say central Vermont, and we've been in and out of the woods and these class four sections all day long. Really beautiful, diverse. A good mixture of pavement and dirt and easy and hard. Overall, not too hard, but some of these little sections here really can be quite tricky, but they're not very long. So this is pretty cool. Check this place out. This is basically like a little grocery store down here, and it's all on the honor system. What do we got going on inside here? Oh, this is a self-serve Vermont uh, farm stand. So we've got some fresh meats, uh, pork and cattle, all raised here on site. Um, and then uh, here we got a, a few pieces of corn left. It's kind of late in the day, but a bunch of zucchini and some summer squash, some maple butter, uh, of course, some uh, fresh maple syrup, all different kinds. And uh, this is uh, this is it. You just come in. You kind of drop your cash in the in the bucket here. It's on the honor system. You take a little bit of change if you need it. Uh, write down what you took, and it all works out for everybody. It's kind of a cool system. And they've got all sorts of different cuts. So you know, here's a flank steak. They've got amazing bacon. Some of the best bacon I've ever had here. And then one uh, zucchini, which is 75 cents. The heck of a zucchini for 75 cents. What else? That's it. Corn? Two corns. How much? We're just staying at a friend's cabin who lives out this way. We wake up this morning, it's raining, there's a stream and a creek over here that's flowing. We're kind of expecting that some of the, the trails might be a little bit muddy and a little bit slippery, so let's hit the road see how it goes this morning. Now we just got on the road at about 8.30 and the rain just stopped, so couldn't have timed it better. There's a, a fresh clean look to everything. There's not going to be any dust on the roads or trails today. Might be a little muddy, but the rain has stopped. We're almost out of Vermont now. Probably less than 10 miles until we get into New Hampshire. We're on these little back roads going between village and village. But uh, man, Vermont is really cool. We're coming in and out of these little like villages on these back roads that come out of one village and then go through the woods and connect to another one. So it's just kind of a different style of BDR over here. And we just decided to stop up here at the cemetery, looking at some of the gravestones, trying to see what some of the older ones are. And I think we got down to like the low 1800s when some of the people here were, were laid to rest. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching this. 
If you like this video, come back for more of the Northeast BDR as I continue to ride the entire route from New York all the way up into Maine.